recently I made a little wooden gate to fit between the fence and the bungalow that I've been documenting. And to get started, my dad asked me to cut a couple of strips of wood and I ripped them by screwing a wider piece to an old heavy off cut of sleeper, then cut it with my gifted works compact saw. I didn't use a guide for this, I'm just following a pencil line. And then I'd wedge them between the gap of the fence and the concrete post groove. That way I'd reduce any movement. Now to fit some structural pieces of timber, that would be the posts for my gate. And after checking with the spirit level and matching the height of the fence panel, I screwed it to the edge. Roughly around the middle of the post to allow me to make it level again while I added more screws at the top and bottom. You can just about see that my dad cut a slight bevel on top of these posts, which I believe is for a bit of detail and for rain to drip off. Then I added a spirit level on top to match the height of it and added a wedge under the second post to keep that height as it was. And then something long and straight across the bottom of the two posts so I knew where to fix exactly on the wall side. So again, checking with the spirit level. And then draw, then, then draw a line down it. And drill with an SDS drill in the center, but I'd only add one masonry screw for now. And because my dad lives closer to the bungalow, he made all of the cuts beforehand for me to put together. But I can tell you with the gap between the two posts, he took that measurement and made the gate 50 millimeter narrower. That's five millimeter clearance on the hinge side and 10 millimeter on the bolt side. So that just gives you an idea for reference. And we'll be working with some tongue and groove or it was matchboard, just like in my last double gate video. I'll leave a link to that below. And he'd already cut the groove section off. So we're starting off with a plain edge and I marked six inches from the top and six from the bottom, making sure I drew across on which side I wanted my spars to be. And one dead center, which that spar will be dead center of that as well. So next to add the spars, because this is such a narrow gate of 49 centimeters wide, my dad said it didn't matter about making a Z frame brace like I did in my double gate video. But remember, it's important that the Z only goes one way, which is this way. And after making sure the best sides of the spars were facing down, I added some exterior glue on the top and lined them up with the pencil marks on the first matchboard piece and added a screw. But I only added one per piece first. And once that was fixed, I continued slotting in the rest of the wood, gently tapping as I went, but this time making sure the nicey sides were facing upwards until I got to the end one. But before I made sure the bottom of the boards were even, I added more six inch marks to the top and bottom of the last piece and that centre mark, and then made sure they were all in line with the spars adding another screw in each. And now these middle ones are trapped, I was then able to tap them at the bottom to make sure they were straight. And before I screwed each slat, my dad's holding a tape measure in the opposite corner and we're checking diagonally to see if it's perfectly square. And often you'll find it's slightly different, so I had to tap with a hammer and keep checking to make sure they were both the same measurement. Then I could continue adding my second screws on either side and then continue with one screw for each middle one along all of the spars, top, middle and bottom. And then the all important job, because I always add too much glue, is wipe the excess off with a rag. And I sanded any sharp edges with sandpaper before treating with a coloured wood preserver.
As for the hinges, I'm using these from a set. I'll try and leave links to everything that I'm using in the description box and I've positioned them on the top and bottom spar and a bolt would be next to the top one and screwed them to the gate. Then to add the latch, which I needed to drill a hole for the bar to slot through. So again, it's going on the middle spar, but overhang it by about an inch. Then I moved it down slightly to draw a mark roughly where that handle hole lies. And this is where I need to drill a hole with an auger bit and a tennis ball, apparently. But I kept having to clear it as I went and got as far as just until the auger bit poked through, flipped it upside down and continue to drill from that side, which avoids splintering the wood. I then turn it back over so I could screw the latch to the door and it was convenient how I was able to move it out of the way to add more screws. Then I'd add this catch controller piece to the very edge of the door and after making the latch level, I screwed it down while it touched the bottom. And getting back to the latch bar, they all vary. So I had to put it into the opposing handles hole, put my thumb on it, keep it there, take it out and measure the excess from my thumb to the end, which was about 12 millimeters. Then slot it into the gate and mark 12 millimeter from the spar. And that's where it needed cutting down. As you can see, it's just too long for the handle because the wooden gate as it is, is too slim. And after my dad cut it down with an angle grinder, I was able to slot it all together and screw the handle on. And now it's ready to hang. So we propped it up with wedges and I measured it later and it worked out we hung it about six centimeters from the floor. And my dad is holding the gate on the opposite side, leaving a five millimeter clearance while I added a screw. But as the brick wall on the other side was slightly out, because it's very likely you're gonna come across these things, Dad suggested to get the clearance on the bolt side even so it would allow the gate to open and close. But now we could straighten and line up the bolt side post with the gate and this made sure the latch hook onto it automatically too. So for reference, I marked with a pencil on the bricks and added my last masonry screws. You don't need roll plugs for these. And then to add the matching pieces to the bolt and the latch. And my dad said to drop it a sixteenth of an inch and that way it would automatically close if it was slammed. And then onto the bolt bit. Oh, finally. And I was given a stop lat to be dead level with the back edge of the post and hammer that in with nails. It was a very windy day, but I didn't go all the way yet in case it didn't close properly. And this is to stop the hinges smashing off. And with it closing and locking properly, I knew to hammer the nails in fully and finish staining that last bit. So here's a gust of wind to show you how it works. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in my next project. Hey, I